it always amazes me that whenever the Holy Spirit seeks to renew the face of the earth, he chooses to do so by coming to those who are simple and lowly in this world, to the small, the frightened, the least important. As a result of this encounter with the Holy Spirit, these people's lives begin to flower with nothing more than the power of Christ. It always, it's always an amazing love story, a culmination of love between the spirit of light and the bride of the spirit. This is something that can happen to any of us, but it could not have happened had it not been for the fiat of a peasant girl of Nazareth, whom the whole world calls Our Lady. It is because of Mary that God fell in love with humanity. It is upon her that the Holy Spirit showered his love and the fullness of God's love for us, the abundance of his love culminated in the conception of Christ in the womb of Mary. Carol Hauslander writes, when Mary surrendered herself to God, there was indeed a new heaven and a new earth. It was the wedding of God to a human child and the wonder of it filled the earth for all time. At most, Our Lady was 14 when the angel Gabriel came to her. Perhaps she was younger. Imagine, the whole world trembled on the word of a child, on a child's consent. Imagine this. A child should bear a child to redeem the world. That truth seems to underline the insistence of Christ that we must become like little children if we want to enter the kingdom of God. I think more than anything else it proves that in God's eyes being something is more important than doing something. So what was Mary asked to say yes to? First, to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, to surrender her littleness and her lowliness to the infinite love, and as a result to become the mother of Christ. She was not asked to do anything herself, but to let something be done to her. She was not asked to renounce anything. She was not asked to lead a special kind of life, to live like a cloistered nun, to cultivate some special virtue or claim some special privilege. She was simply asked to live in the world, to marry Joseph, be a carpenter's wife, just as she had intended, never imagining anything out of the ordinary would ever happen to her. It almost seems, doesn't it, as if God becoming a man and being born of a woman was so ordinary. <laughs> Secondly, there was to be no announcement, no fanfare, no baby shower. The whole thing was to happen secretly, quietly. Even though the prophets for ages had foretold it and the psalmist had sung about Christ's coming, the loudest proclamation of his presence in the world, when you think about it, was to be the heartbeat of a child in the womb of a child. The only thing that God asked of her was the gift of her humanity. She was to give him her body and soul unconditionally 
and what in this new light would have seemed to be so trivial to anyone but Mary, she was to give him her daily life. On the outside, it would be no different from the life she would have led if she had not been chosen to be the mother of God at all. She was to live her ordinary life with Joseph. It seems as if God wanted to give the world the impression, again, that God becoming human was so ordinary. How true this is of each one of us who by our baptism now bear Christ within. Christ is born in our lives, not as a rule, through extraordinary ways, but through the ordinary life and human love that you and I give to one another. All because Our Lady said yes. She said yes for us all. She said yes for the human race. And each one of us must echo that yes for our own lives. We are all asked if we will surrender what we are, our flesh and blood to the Holy Spirit, and allow Christ to fill the emptiness formed by the particular shape which our life takes. Whether we're married, single, religious, consecrated as priests, whatever life we live, we are asked if we will surrender who we are to the Holy Spirit and allow Christ to fill our emptiness. Let me go back to Carol Hauslander and read from you a section of her poem, The Reed, which beautifully sums up this message which I share with you today. In each heart comes Christ. In each, Christ comes to birth. Into our hands, Mary has given her child. Heir to the world's tears, heir to the world's toil, heir to the world's scars. She has laid love in his cradle, answering for us all, Be it done unto me.